This video is intended to help you get started doing some work on your New Holland L35 or your L775 with Vickers transmissions. I'll show you how to lift it, show you a little about the hydraulic system, show you where the drain plugs are, the filters, etc. Give you a little idea about the uh, locations of things on the engine as well, which is a Wisconsin VG4D four-cylinder flathead engine. Uh, so this video hopefully will get you started on some of your projects. Check back to my channel. As time goes on, I'll post new videos on the skids there. Good luck. This is a 1973 New Holland L35 that I'm doing a little work on. As you can see, I have it on blocks uh, with the wheels off. On this side, I have the chain removed as well as the idler assembly. Um, but just as a good point of information, these are good lift points up here. You can use standard jack stands without any attachments up here. And in the rear, you can just use wood blocks. I used a two and a quarter ton jack to lift the rear first about where that red jack stand is. That jack stand's not holding the, the skid steer up. It's just there in case there's a, a slip. But I was able to simply lift the rear up, get the blocks on, and move right up to the front and put the jack stands on. This piece of wood here is also not holding up the skid steer, but it's there for safety. So as far as your jack stands and your supports. As you can see, I have uh, steel plates on both sides, so you may be moving your wood blocks a little differently. Most of the weight of this skid steer, of course, is in the rear. So that's how uh, I lifted it. Next, I want to show a little bit about changing the hydraulic fluid, or in this case, the uh, oil in the hydraulic system. So this L35 has Vickers transmissions. You can tell what kind of transmissions you have by looking inside at them. You can remove the seat, as I've done here. I've also removed a couple other things, such as the high-low adjustment rod and a bat, the battery. But these are the transmissions, one on each side, and they'll be labeled. In my case, they're labeled Vickers. Um, don't be fooled by the Cessna, Cessna flow divider and to think, oh, you see Cessna and you think you have Cessna transmissions when actually you might have Vickers. Also, you can look in the manual to see the configuration of the um, steering rams is a little different in the Cessnas. I'll show this in another video, but this is the four-way gearbox right here for the Vickers. And this is the uh, dipstick there. That'll be in another vi video. But since this one's about hydraulics, that's how you tell which transmissions you have, which is important because these transmissions take two different types of fuel. I mean of uh, fluid, excuse me. They also have different filter configurations. So if you have this reprint, of the operator's manual from Gen Cells, and you go to the back to look at your fluid types and capacities you'll see they don't even acknowledge in here that there's any other transmission available except Cessna's but as you just saw this is Vickers so if you look at this and you, you say oh I have a Vickers it must be the same you're going to end up putting a ATF in Dextron 2 ATF but that's the wrong type of fluid for this system. The Vickers actually uses motor oil, which I'll show you now. So if you have the service manual, which as you can see covers the uh, L35, 775, 778, 779, you'll see that it does list that Vickers transmissions are available. And this manual gets a little confusing because it goes back and forth between Cessna and Vickers and it's got a couple other models in it. Since mine's just the L35, I broke it into only things I need. But if you go to the specifications page for the L35, you'll see where it's highlighted. 
I don't know how well this will focus. There we go. Uh, you'll see the hydraulic fluid Dextron 2 ATF Cessna only, but for Vickers, we're going to use motor oil. Um, as I said as well, I believe the hydraulic oil filter is a little different on the Cessnas, but this is the hydraulic oil filter on the Vickers right here. Right behind it, that's the reservoir. This here is the fill spout and the dipstick. There isn't any fluid in it right now because I've actually already drained the hydraulic fluid and then I thought maybe I should make a video. So I'll show you uh, the drain port and I will show you the replacement of the filter. So you, you don't have to lift the skid steer or remove the wheels to reach the, the drain plug if you're just doing the hydraulic fluid or for that matter the chain case. Uh, that's the chain case. Drain plug. And you can see right there that is the drain plug for the hydraulic fluid reservoir. That's just a square plug. You can just use a regular crescent wrench to get on it and turn it. It shouldn't be terribly tight. Uh, and that's where you're going to get your fluid from. It's recommended that to reach all of this area and to get the most fluid out, obviously, you go ahead and put the skid steer up on the boom locks. There we go up on the, the boom locks. So just while you're inside, before you take your seat out obviously and everything, go ahead and lift the boom. And this lever over here on this side is the lift linkage lock. And that will be in that position normally. You just pull that and just kind of feel until it locks. If you have a, someone to help you, that's really useful because they can tell you when it lines up. All you're doing is pushing this pin through this hole. In the manual, it also says that you can put it underneath, right? So you can, if you want to get it right in there, that's fine. But if that's not working out for one reason or another, either you can have the pin on the bottom. Do you want to do that before you drain the hydraulic fluid? Because as you can see, you have quite a lot of length up, uh, up above. I'm not going to be able to get the hydraulic fluid out that's in this position and I have the bucket off for a, uh, a different reason. But that's what you want to do before you go ahead and drain the hydraulic fluid. This, this was actually low and as you can see I've collected quite a bit. Now a couple of that that you see is from the chain cases. I have read and I just experienced that Sometimes people will save money by draining the hydraulic fluid, whatever happens to be in there, and then using that in the chain cases, since each chain case takes two and a half gallons of oil. Um, that's in fact what was done here, so I had ATF in the chain cases. I'm going to refill it with what it is supposed to have, however, which is just SAE 90. So I've got a five gallon of 90 that I'm going to use in there. I got a good deal on that. I got that for about 43 bucks at CarQuest. Uh, that will fill up both of my chain cases when the time comes. Okay, so after you drain as much as you can, you can open up the casing the little housing for the filter. Now I put this filter housing back on because I actually removed the filter to match it. But I'll show you how it comes off. On the bottom there's a on the bottom there is a, uh, a bolt and that will obviously not be turning when you're doing it because it will be tighter. But this bolt has is very long and it's threaded at the end. So you remove that go and in there you'll find your your filter some 
glue has been dripping into there. And this is the filter that you'll see. Not sure what that filter was there, but after a lot of research and cross-referencing with the New Holland number, I was able to determine that there's a number of filters that work, one of which is the uh, Napa 1467 series. Um, Fram makes one, Wix makes one, they're all basically the same. And I think that was about 8 or $9 on Amazon that I was able to, it was cheaper on Amazon than it was at, uh, than it was at Napa. So I went ahead and got that. Won't have to change this filter for a very long time. So the filter for the hydraulic oil is different on each side. On this side it looks like this and on this side it looks like that. The way it fits in is with this side facing down. Just pop it in there and then grab this bolt and push it into place. The new filter should come with a new gasket here and so next I'll show you where that gasket is and how to remove it. For that I'm going to move the camera to about here because that's what we'll be looking up about like that the next image. That is where your gasket is as you can see. By the way this is the oil filter not to be confused with the hydraulic oil filter here. Right here is the gasket. So we'll just pop that out, clean it up, put some oil on the new gasket, push the new gasket in place, and then go ahead and put the filter in place. So there's the new gasket in place. I changed the angles a little bit to show you uh, that you can also see the fuel filter down here which I just replaced and uh, there's the pump. So the new gasket's in place and next we'll just put the put the casing back on, fasten it and be good. Okay so I had to change angles again uh, but there, is, there it is in place and this by the way is a three quarter inch. Okay so the drain plug is back in place, the filters back in place. Uh, if you had to replace any hydraulic lines, make sure those are back, back in place and snug. And at this point you're ready to go ahead and fill her up. Uh, on the Vickers, this is where the fill and dipstick is located. I don't know. We'll, we'll see once I start filling it up. As I mentioned, this was low to begin with so um, while I have a little view over here this is this is this L35 has a Wisconsin engine and I, I don't have an alternator you can see there's my coil I already mentioned this is the oil filter this is where you drain let's see if I can get in there this is where you drain the oil this is the distributor two plugs on this side two plugs on the other there is a heat sensor on the block, but that's been uh, disconnected by a previous owner. This is the engine oil dipstick. This comes loose down here. I really had to get that in, in place. And this here is engine oil refill. This is the fuel tank. As you see, I wrote 90 plus octane on there. It seems to be very, very uh, finicky about that. I've, need, I've needed to use starter fluid and to choke the engine to start it every time I start. But over here is the carburetor, the air intake, and this is the uh, fuel line back here.